Before we open ChemDraw, let's take a moment to discuss the main toolbar. At the top, we have the lasso and marquee, which are both selection tools. The lasso allows you to draw a freeform shape to make your selection, and the marquee is a rectangular selection tool. Structure Perspective allows you to select a drawn structure and reorient it to better show three-dimensionality. The various fragmentation tools let you easily split up a complex molecule to consider retrosynthetic fragments. The text tool allows you to type atom labels or add text to your drawings. If you click with the eraser tool selected, you can delete one bond at a time, for example converting a double bond to a single bond. Clicking and holding allows you to erase larger areas of structure and text. The solid bond draws a stereochemistry undefined bond. Clicking on an atom of a molecule that is already drawn will place the bond as close as possible to a 120 degree bond angle. Clicking the atom and dragging allows you to place the bond at your own preferred angle. The multiple bonds tool allows you to generate a variety of different types of bonds. With the dashed, hashed, bold, wedged, and hollow wedge, you can show stereochemistry at a center and indicate if a bond is pointing away from you or toward you. The wavy bond indicates a mixture of up and down at a chiral center and is used to indicate that a carbon is a mixture of R and S stereoisomers. The pen tools allow you to draw curved lines. The arrow tools allow you to show reactions in retrosynthesis, show equilibrium and resonance, and draw your own mechanisms using curved arrow notation. You can add molecular orbitals to any atom using the orbitals tools. The drawing and bracket tools permit you to make a variety of shapes. I often use this tool to box important structures. With the chemical symbol tools, you can add lone pairs and charges to your molecules. The query tools allow you to label chiral molecules. Tables can be created with the table tools, and TLC plates drawn with the chromatography tools. You can then adjust the RF of your spots. The chain tools allow you to draw long carbon chains while counting carbon atoms for you. This is great for drawing fatty acids and other molecules with long carbon chains. Spend some time looking through the templates. These are great time savers. As an example of some of the capabilities, there are templates for all of the amino acids, bicyclic compounds, chair cyclohexane, and Newman projections. There's even some chemistry and biology clip art available in this menu. The rest of the tools allow you to generate various saturated and unsaturated rings with a click, which you can further modify with any of the other tools. Clicking the middle of a bond with the cyclohexane tools, for example, allows you to draw fused rings, while clicking on a single atom allows you to quickly generate a spirocyclic structure. Now that we've had a quick overview of the main toolbar, I will demonstrate how to quickly generate high-quality figures and schemes. For this basic tutorial, I will show several ways to generate structures, evaluate stereochemistry with a click, and show the basics of scheme drawing. When you open ChemDraw, the view will look something like this. I'm going to use the benzene ring tool to draw the compound pyridine. Notice how small the nitrogen atom looks against the bonds. The default settings for ChemDraw do not give good atom to bond size ratios. To correct this, apply ACS settings to all of your documents through the file menu. You can do this by selecting Open Stationery and select ACS Document 1996, or you can apply the setting to the current document through the File menu using Apply Document Settings. To begin, let's look at the amino acid L-alanine. 
First, I'll demonstrate how to draw this compound using the drawing tools. We'll begin by drawing a bond in the vertical direction, which I will make into the carbonyl group. As a shortcut, I can use the solid bond tool to click on a single bond and convert it to a double bond. Note that you can also generate double bonds with the multiple bond tools, as well as triple bonds and several other bond types. Now that I have a skeleton for alanine drawn, it's time to add my heteroatoms, or non-carbon atoms. I can click on the text tool and type my label, or with the bond tool still selected, I can double click to type my labels. Now all that's left is to add stereochemistry. I want to generate the enantiomer of the amino acid found in humans, which is commonly called the L enantiomer. All amino acids in the human body are L, as opposed to D amino acids. To relate this to RNS nomenclature system, all amino acids found in humans are S, with the exception of cysteine. A faster way to draw L-alanine is to use its IUPAC, or IUPAC accepted common name. In the Structure menu, use the Convert Name to Structure command and type L-alanine. Notice that this structure is oriented differently than the structure I drew manually. Vancomycin is a complex antibiotic, and its structure is not readily generated from its IUPAC name in ChemDraw, as it contains superscripted numbers. In this case, we can use the Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System, or SMILES for short, this SMILE string can be used to quickly generate this complex structure. In a web browser, I will search Vancomycin SMILES. My first hit is from PubChem, which is a good source. I'll navigate to this web page and copy the isomeric SMILES string. Now, in the Edit Paste Special menu of ChemDraw, I can paste as SMILES, quickly generating Vancomycin's structure. The IUPAC International Chemical Identifier, or INCHI string, is another type of structure abbreviation that can be used to quickly produce structures in ChemDraw. Let's return to our amino acid to explore stereochemistry, which is easily examined using ChemDraw. When we right-click on the Stereo Center, the menu that pops up contains an option to show stereochemistry. With that selected, we now see the S label come up on our structure, indicating this is the S enantiomer at the chiral center. Within the context of showing stereochemistry, we need to look at the two ways we can reorient structures using ChemDraw, as one method will preserve our stereochemistry and the other will invert it changing it to the R enantiomer. I'm going to copy-paste our structure to illustrate this. In the object menu, there are two options to manipulate the structure at the bottom, flip and rotate. First, I'll apply the flip command. Notice that the entire structure flips, including the stereocenter. This compound has now changed to the R enantiomer and has flipped 180 degrees. This is useful for representing enantiomers as being reflected through a mirror plane, and I'll use my drawing tools to draw a dotted line to represent that plane. Now, if we rotate the structure using the Rotate menu item, the stereocenter rotates along with the structure and stereochemistry is preserved. You can also show the stereochemistry of E and Z double bonds using the Show Stereochemistry command. I'll demonstrate this with the two isomers of 2-butene. I can draw my double bond first, and then click on the terminal carbon atoms to finish the structure. This first structure has the high priority groups on opposite sides, and thus is the E double bond. Now, let's look at the Z isomer. When I click the terminal carbon atoms, ChemDraw automatically generates the E isomer again. If I use the undo command, either by typing Control and Z, or using the undo button in the toolbar at the top of ChemDraw, 
When I click on the terminal atom again using the bond tool, notice it creates the Z isomer. Whenever two orientations are available for a newly drawn bond, the undo command will allow you to redraw the bond in the second orientation with a click. This works for both sp2 and sp3 centers. If at any point in the process of drawing structures, you move or drag a bond into an unpreferred orientation, you can use the structure menu to fix it. Select Clean Up Structure and ChemDraw will correct your bond angles for you. In solution, close to neutral pH, amino acids exist as Zwitter ions. Using the chemical symbol tools, we can easily add these charges and the necessary hydrogen atoms. Using L-alanine once again, let's add a negative charge to the carboxylic acid to form a carboxylate. I'll click my single bonded oxygen atom and place my negative charge. Notice that the H atom automatically disappears. Now let's add the necessary protons to the amine group. This time I'm going to draw out all three protons that the amine group will have in its Zwitter ionic form. Notice when I add my final hydrogen atom, that nitrogen becomes illuminated with the red chemical warning box. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it is positively charged, so ChemDraw is indicating a mistake in the structure. When I add my positive charge, the chemical warning disappears. Note that I could have simply added a positive charge to the nitrogen atom in the first place, and ChemDraw updates the number of hydrogen atoms automatically. But here, I wanted to draw out all of my hydrogen atoms. Now, let's explore the arrow tools a bit more by looking at resonance and equilibrium, and then we'll finish by drawing a simple reaction mechanism. The Zwitter ionic form of alanine has an equivalent resonance structure, so let's first use ChemDraw to show this resonance. First, I'm going to use the chemical symbol tools to show all lone pairs on our oxygen atoms. Note that when I click on the oxygen atom, I can draw the lone pair associated with it into whatever orientation that I want. Now, by clicking and dragging, we can pull out the arrow's tool menu. Let's select our resonance arrow and place it next to alanine. Now we can select a curved arrow to show this lone pair on the negatively charged oxygen forming a double bond. And the double bond to this oxygen breaking to become a lone pair on oxygen. Remember, resonance forms are not separate structures that the compound oscillates or interconverts between, even though sometimes it looks that way. In fact, resonance forms are a construct that allows us to gain a better picture of the overall structure of a molecule. The real structure is a weighted average of the resonance forms that we can show for a given molecule, with better resonance forms contributing more. We can also represent this average structure as a resonance hybrid, using partial bonds and partial charges. Using the multiple bond tool, select the half solid, half dashed bond to represent these partial bonds. Now we can add partial charges. In the view menu, find the character map window, which contains useful symbols and Greek letters. Select the lowercase delta, and add negative charges to represent the partial charge on each oxygen atom. Sometimes a compound is in equilibrium with another compound. A simple example of this is the partial ionization of a weak acid in water. When an aqueous solution of acetic acid is made, for example, some of its conjugate base, or acetate, forms. 
along with a proton, which we can represent as the hydronium ion. Now we need to show an equilibrium arrow. I'm going to select the unbalanced equilibrium arrow to show that most of the compound remains unionized. Notice the water and hydronium ion require sub and superscripting. This can be done using these buttons. However, ChemDraw makes this process even easier with the formula button. Select everything you want to convert to a formula and simply click the CH2 button here. I'd like to note that ChemDraw automatically enters formula mode when you are typing directly onto structures that you've created with the bond or ring tools. When an aqueous solution of an amino acid is treated with acid, the carboxylate group gets protonated. We can show the mechanism of this reaction using curved arrows. Again using alanine, let's show the mechanism of the reaction of an amino acid with the hydronium ion. show an arrow originating from the nucleophilic oxygen atom. We can show either an electron pair or the negative charge attacking the proton of the hydronium ion by pointing to the hydrogen atom where the new bond forms. To complete our mechanism, we must show the electron pair that was bonded to the hydrogen atom becoming a lone pair on oxygen. This reaction gives us protonated alanine and a molecule of water. We can copy paste the alanine zwitter ion and then modify the structure to show the product. Notice that you can change the curviness of the mechanism arrow after drawing. ChemDraw is a powerful program that can be used to quickly generate and manipulate structures. Its true capabilities are beyond the scope of this introductory tutorial. I refer you to the Perkin Elmer site for additional tutorials and to link to the ChemDraw manual.